We embarked upon the cruising lifestyle to explore places off the beaten path while bringing our home with us. This week, we're continuing our journey in San Blas, sailing 50 nautical miles east to Mamitupu, reputed to be one of the most traditional Kuna villages. Most cruisers do not visit this area, just 50 miles from the Colombian border at the foothills of the Darien Forest. Our curiosity to learn more about the elusive Kuna culture and the allure of the mysterious Darien is driving us to explore further. Turns out our biggest challenge didn't have anything to do with nature. Today we are on our way to an island called Mamitupu. It's supposed to be one of the more traditional islands in the San Blas or Gunayala. We're excited to see what the culture there is like and we've got a friend of ours, Tobias, on board with us. Which is super helpful because we've heard they really don't speak Spanish there, they speak Guna. Tobias can help translate for us and of course introduce us to people and it will be a more authentic experience being with the Guna. We saw that there was great wind this morning so we took off, pulled up the sails and we were able to sail for about two hours and then the wind just died. It's about a 50 nautical mile trip east so it's well out of the typical route that most cruisers go in Gunayala. So we're looking forward to this experience. I plotted our course using coordinates from the Bauhaus guide. So we're heading inside here and then we're gonna head over this way and follow all the waypoints that I input. All the way over to Mami Tupu. Yoda, be careful. Ooh, wow. Oh, Yoda. Stop. Wow. So we lost all of the wind and we're heading into a squall plus we're going closer to shore and we're going to have to navigate between a lot of reefs and islands so we dropped the main and we're motoring. Having to navigate these waters in the rain with low visibility is less than ideal. As we've mentioned in previous videos, the Navionics charts for San Blas are not super accurate and the Bauhaus guide recommends traveling with the sun behind you and one person on coral lookout to avoid any surprises. Here I'm getting our GPS location from our B&G and then checking the Bauhaus charts on OpenCPN on the laptop to make sure we're not headed for any small reefs. Once the rain stopped, we could actually see, and what met our eyes was a stunning landscape. It was as if we were traveling in a river, with small sea level islands on port and layered hills emerging through the fog on starboard, more like a painting than reality. Vastly different than what we had seen in Kunayala so far, and we appeared to be the only cruisers in the area, Cayucos the only other vessels on the water. seems to stimulate all senses is the unknown. Different scents, sounds, and sights. They pique our curiosity, the desire to learn more, to understand, for example, why a man has a tree in his cayuco. Tobias explained he's going to throw it in the water, secure it, and leave it there for a few days to attract fish. Then he'll return to reap the reward.
Soon enough, we were approaching Mami Tupu. Magical Sandblast Islands. Check out the video linked above and in the description to see our first Yeah. So, aquí se puede. Eh, aquí tiene la tubería, entonces. Sí, me, tubería ya sí es mejor se va un poquito, un poquito allá. allá. Perfecto, aquí. Turned out that the bottom at the first anchorage was all silt and the anchor just wouldn't hold. And we found that if we're near rivers, like where a, a river comes out, it's just too silty for our anchor to grab onto. So we came right around the corner to another spot, anchored, and we are stuck. So we're super excited to be here when we were arriving that we could hear kids calling from the from the island gringo gringo in uh anguna <laughs> it'll be fun to go over and see them tomorrow but this place is really beautiful it feels almost like we've been going up a river instead of the ocean so it's got a totally different feel than the area of the of Yala that we've been so far so definitely excited to check it out check out the video linked above and in the description to see our first impression of the magical San Blas Islands my great grandfather told me originally we come from Colombia now we move here in the island and this time, by only population, we have 60 people. And really, we surviving. We work in, we have uh, farmers, people, and fishing. We, go, we do it every day, farming and fishing. The ladies, the women, spend time home, preparing food, or making mola. And so we took a trip up the nearby river, essentially the local commuter road, to see the fruits of their labor with Pablo and his grandson as our guides. Each day, villagers, primarily men, paddle cayucos to fish and to work the fields on the mainland. The Kuna live on the island to escape the blood-sucking mosquitoes and relentless noceums, or chitras as they're called here. But the birds seem to be quite at home. Local palms line the riverbank as far as the eye can see. Through banana plantations by mango trees, calabash or jicaro trees, whose fruit is inedible but used to make bowls and maracas, and pineapples, along the riverbank, then deeper into the forest. Yeah. We found a veritable buffet and eagerly indulged in some samples. Very nice. Good. Cool. 
Can we try one by Delicious. Mm -hmm. el real turista. Real turista. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to come into the forest. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. Delicious, very sweet. Mm. It was interesting to see this type of farming. Essentially, the kuna take care of what grows naturally in their environment, nurturing the gifts Mother Nature provides to sustain their families and make a living selling to the Colombians. However, over the past few years, demand has reduced drastically and the kuna are unsure of their future. Ready? Ready to go. Today we are going in a in a Cayuco with our friends and we're gonna take it up the river. I this is the first time I've been in a Cayuco <laughs> and it seems that it takes a particular kind of balance. Hopefully I won't end up in the water. We headed towards the mouth of the river once again, passing people returning with bananas. Curiosity was driving us to head further upriver than yesterday to explore the uncultivated, wild part of the jungle. From here on up, the water gets really shallow, so we're leaving the engine here. Okay. From here on up, it's paddles only. Be careful, <laughs> duck, you, duck your big head. <laughs> <laughs> The landscape along the riverbank morphed from maintained bananas and coconuts to fallen trees with twisted roots. Nature clearly left to its own devices. This is as far as we go with the canoe, and so now we're gonna go for a little trek in the jungle. We were clearly unprepared for a hike through the jungle with our bare legs and low top sneakers, while Pablo and his grandson wore wading boots. This is a new water tank installed by the Panamanian government to bring water to Mami Tupu. Now we're entering the area of the jungle that is totally raw, uncultivated, part of it's the beginning of the Darien forest. 
This forest is primarily known for the Darien Gap, the treacherous stretch of jungle between Panama and Colombia, filled with armed guerrillas, drug and human traffickers, and some of the world's most deadly creatures like the Fer de Lance Viper, a highly venomous snake, and the Brazilian Wandering Spider, with a leg span of 5 to 7 inches and a bite that can put you in the hospital or even kill you. The foothills of the Darien, <laughs> impenetrable jungle. While we weren't in the Darien Gap, but at the beginning of the forest, those creatures don't know boundaries, so we kept our eyes open for any critters. We made the fatal mistake of not bringing machete, so this is where our jungle tour ends. Today is one of those days where pretty much nothing is going right. <laughs> we had planned to leave very early this morning at first light to go about 50 nautical miles back west to Nargana. And so we had to wait out a squall, a thunderstorm came through, all good. We turned on the instruments and of course we don't have any depth, which is one of the most important things for us to have in this area. We had decided we wanted to go outside so that we would be able to sail because there are little islands right off of the coast and then there's patches of reef everywhere. So it's really narrow area to sail. So we thought we would go outside, but we haven't gone outside before. And it's really pretty much kind of uncharted waters in this area, just 50 miles from the Colombian border. So we headed out a bit further offshore than we would have normally just to make sure that we're safe from reef. Of course, the wind is coming pretty much from the direction we're going, so we're, we're heading into it. The seas are kind of confused. We've got lightning. We basically lost the rest of our instruments. We keep getting an alarm, AP heading data missing, going off every few seconds. AP rudder data missing. So we just turned off the BNG system and we're using the Navionics on the phone. We're not offshore or anything. I mean, we can see shore, so it's really not that big a deal. Just the biggest concern are reefs. Fingers crossed, everything will be fine. And we have Tobias um, Reef Watch up front and it just started raining, poor guy.
no instruments, hand steering, old fashioned sailing, looking at the telltales and the wind vane, but we are, we have the engines on because we're really close to the reef. We would have to head out straight into the waves. So we're doing some motor sailing. Moving, I mean, we're doing, uh, thanks to our cell phone avionics, we're doing about six, seven knots. Not great. Grand old time. You guys going to drop off all yeah. this stuff? Yeah, we're going to drop it off and come back and have dinner. Okay. After spending a bit of time with the Kuna, their culture still seems as impenetrable as the forest they come from. We have only scratched the surface, but have come to understand that Kunas share abundance with their friends and family, hence jumping at the opportunity to send food to Nargana, and don't expect or receive a thank you in return. The belief is they'll be repaid in the afterlife when they meet once again in heaven. We recognize how extremely fortunate we are and are beyond grateful for this experience. Check out this video to join us at our favorite anchorage in the San Blas, a protected lagoon filled with reefs for exploring, admiring and foraging, an absolute dream oasis.